the worldwide burden of invasive esophageal adenocarcinoma, with records of its rising incidence and poor prognosis, has focused interest on Barrett's esophagus, a preneoplastic condition caused by gastroesophageal reflux disease. The Barrett esophagus, esophageal adenocarcinoma progression, was first documented in the 1970s, providing targets for the screening, monitoring, and endoscopic management of early stage neoplasia. High grade dysplasia and adenocarcinoma limited to the mucosa are the two indications for which endoscopic treatment is recommended. Based on the findings of Japanese studies pertaining to early stage gastric neoplasia, European publications have suggested the existence of a submucosal esophageal adenocarcinoma subtype associated with a very low risk for lymph node metastasis. For patients who have this particular subtype with low risk characteristics, recent guidelines have advised endoscopic excision as a valid alternative to esophagectomy. The endoscopic management of Barrett's neoplasia consists of two steps. First, the excision of endoscopically visible abnormalities for accurate diagnosis and staging. And second, eradication of the residual Barrett esophagus segment because of its metachronous lesion risk, which exceeds 20% over a two-year period. Endoscopic mucosal resection appears to be the treatment of choice for the excision procedure with the advantages of being safe, effective, and the most comprehensively studied method. In a prospective trial of endoscopic mucosal resection for mucosal cancer in 288 patients, complete responses were achieved in 97% and 87% of them after a median of 3 and 61 months respectively. No death related to Barrett's neoplasia was recorded at the last follow-up. This procedure, however, allows only piecemeal resection and is limited to lesions smaller than 15 millimeters. As for the eradication of residual Barrett's esophagus, several ablative techniques have been described, with radiofrequency ablation currently considered the most effective method with the best side effect profile. Nevertheless, this technique does not provide specimens for histopathologic evaluation and the procedure is expensive and not reimbursed by national health systems in some countries. Stepwise radical endoscopic resection has also been suggested, although strictures occur in half of the patients. Endoscopic submucosal dissection has recently emerged as a potential technique to improve complete resection rates. In a meta-analysis, endoscopic submucosal dissection was shown to achieve better rates of arm block and curative resection and less local recurrence of gastrointestinal tract tumors compared with endoscopic submucosal dissection. Endoscopic submucosal dissection should therefore be the preferred technique because it provides the most reliable histopathological assessment for accurate staging. Moreover, this technique potentially enables the endoscopic treatment of challenging lesions such as those that are non-lifting measure more than 20 millimeters or are suspected of deep mucosal invasion. On the other hand, endoscopic submucosal dissection is more time consuming and associated with more serious complications than the other techniques so that expertise and experience are required. Shevo et al assess the efficacy, safety, and long-term results of endoscopic submucosal dissection in neoplasia 
associated with Barrett's esophagus in a large number of patients referred to a tertiary center. They report the results in their paper with the title Clinical Outcome in Patients Treated with Endoscopic Submucosal Dissection for Superficial Barrett's Neoplasia. Here is a summary of the findings. Background and study aims. The role of endoscopic submucosal dissection in Barrett's neoplasia is ill-defined, although it might provide a higher curative resection rate and better histologic assessment than endoscopic mucosal resection. We aimed to assess the efficacy, safety and long-term results of endoscopic submucosal dissection. Patients and methods. A retrospective analysis was done of 75 consecutive patients with Barrett's esophagus who underwent ESD between January 2007 and February 2014. Endoscopic submucosal dissection was performed for visible lesions that were multiple larger than 15 millimeters or poorly lifting or suspected of submucosal infiltration. The primary endpoint was the rate of curative resection of carcinoma. Results. Median patient age was 68 years, median follow-up was 20 months and median maximum specimen diameter was 52.5 millimeters. On block resection rate was 90% and the rates of curative resection of carcinoma and high-grade dysplasia carcinoma were 85% and 64% respectively. G3 differentiation and invasion to greater than PT1M2 were observed in 25% and 67% of patients with adenocarcinoma respectively. There were five early adverse events, two delayed hemorrhages and three perforations, all treated endoscopically. No endoscopic submucosal dissection specific death occurred. Esophageal strictures developed in 60% of patients, all treated endoscopically. Additional treatment for residual Barrett's esophagus was recommended to 62%. At the latest follow-up, complete remission of neoplasia and intestinal metaplasia was found in 92% and 73% of patients respectively. Conclusion. Endoscopic submucosal dissection appears to be safe and effective with a high rate of curative resection of carcinoma. This should be considered for patients with Barrett's neoplasia at risk of incomplete resection or poor pathological assessment with conventional endoscopic submucosal dissection.